So the boycott got reversed, and then I think we reversed it back. But then do you reverse? I don't know. But our guest does know, and we'll find out next. It's another episode of Locked on A's. You are Locked on A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, you made it to the weekend and that that right there is awesome. You worked hard for it, so welcome to it. And welcome to another episode of, I think, the best way to find out what's going on with the Oakland Athletics on a daily basis. But then again, I'm biased. I'm Wayne Coy, lifetime A's fan and host here of Locked on A's, your team every day, originally from the Bay Area, East Bay, Oakland, all the way up until junior high, then we moved to San Leandro, and I've been on the radio for many years, okay? Um, We want to thank you before we even get started for Making Locked On A's your first listen every day. Super important, all you everydayers. I know who you are. Thanks for checking in. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. What a deal they've got right now, a $5 money line bet. Just pick the winner. It's all you have to do. If you have a new account, your $5 bet can get you $150 in bonus bets and coming up in a few, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. But check them out right now if you want. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Familiar faces in familiar places. His name is Stu Clary. And it was six months ago that Stu and I met. Actually, a little longer than that, about seven months ago. And Stu was on the show. And before we go any further, we just let the cat out of the bag. There would have been no Oakland A's reverse boycott if this guy hadn't have probably had too many beers and came up with a crazy idea. Crazy idea it was. Hey, Wayne, and glad to see you again. Uh, nice to see you. Nice seeing all the uh, everydayers out there. Glad you're here on the uh, Locked On A's podcast network. I know that's where I go every day for my daily uh, dose of Oakland A's baseball. Yes, sir. So rever- reverse boycott was your baby. And then, and I think this was key, you are smart enough to know, hey, you know what? Rome doesn't build itself without a little help. So you went out and got some help. Oakland 68s get on board. And then this thing just starts snowballing. And I remember, Stu, you told me as we were, I think about a week out or two weeks out, you go, hey, I don't know. You know, it looks like we're going to have some people there, but we'll find out, I guess. And it was just beyond anybody's imagination. So how do you feel about that? Six months already. You feel good? Um, I'll tell you, you know, Thinking back, <clears throat> excuse me, thinking back on the reverse boycott, um, the first thing I want to say is you, you mentioned them. It does not happen without, you know, the Oakland 68s. It does not happen without uh, the, you know, last dive bar. It does not happen with without so many people. Hal Gordon, it, do, it doesn't happen without uh, Jeff August, who was the first person I turned to for some advice on this thing. Um, I, I got a lot of props and a lot of attaboys. I'll tell you, all I did, I came up with an idea and I posted it on Twitter and then it snowballed. Everybody, it, it, you know, it, it hit a chord and a lot of people thought it was a good idea. And, you know, but thinking back and being the way things are, you know, the state of the team, I've really been doing a lot of reminiscing about times I've been to the Coliseum and I was thinking it's easily one of my top three, five moments at the Coliseum. I mean, it was what a surreal and wonderful and powerful night that was. Yes, it was. Yeah. I I, I gotta tell you, I wanted to put it at the very top of my list of moments, but my wife who I got married to at home plate reminded me that that's supposed to be up at the top of the list. And I went, Oh, of course, of course it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's, it's, it's certainly in the top five for me easily. I mean, we've, we've had so many, and if you're expanding it to, you know, non A's related stuff at the Coliseum, I mean, how many, did, how many great times I have a day on the green and uh, just 
we're products of a bygone era, Wayne. You and I yeah. are dinosaurs, man. But um, there might still be a little bit of life left in us. Yeah, but what we are also, Stu, is we're part of that chain. And, a, and I think probably the furthest, you and I would be like, let's say, I guess possibly second generation because it would have been possible, I suppose, that our dads would have taken us when we were kids, right? I don't. Sure I think was. you and I though were we were sort of the originators, and then we had kids. And in my case, my kids have had my kids' kids. My kids have had kids, and they're well, bringing my grandkids to the ballpark. You well, too, the, I think, the right? First, the first A's game I attended, I went with a friend of mine, and his mom took us. So, you know, for sure. Um, again, you and I, obviously, to look at our pictures, we're old. I was five when the A's moved to Oakland. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, yeah, sort of thing. But um, you started yeah. thinking about that, didn't you? You're like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You're you're uh, you're actually younger than I am. I thought we were the same age, but you've I got you by a couple. Yeah, January 19th. I just look older. Yeah. Wait, you January got, what? You broke up 60, right when you said 63, 63. 63. Yeah, and I'm born in 61. So there you well, there go. There you go. You're yeah. I'm your pretty brother. old there, Wayne. You're getting pretty <laughs> damn old. Yeah. Shh. So I got I to gotta ask you this, though, because um, I was there, and if I had to pick, like, well, okay, first of all, the parking lot was lit. Everybody getting their shirts and just the, you know, the, the, the they're playing bags, and, the, and it's Dave Cavill's mouth and John Fisher. I mean, that it was like almost like going to the circus out in the parking lot. And, you know, you know full well the Oakland A's, do tailgates like nobody else For except sure. maybe except maybe the old oakland raiders right so you got sure. you got tailgate in your blood but then once you get through the gates it's all that other stuff and then sitting down looking around going everybody is as into this as i am i was worried that you know i'm going to geek out and i'm going to be the only one what was i thinking i mean it was an entire stadium of like-minded people and boy was that never clearer than the fifth inning when everybody just went gone. 100% Silent. credit to Hal Gordon, otherwise known as Hal the Hot Dog Guy. That was 100% his idea. He um, insisted that those go on, that the instructions for the top of the fifth go on the cheer card. What a stroke of genius. Because it, on an iconic night, that was an iconic moment. It I mean, was. You have to pinpoint the most powerful moment. It's ridiculous and so glad that it got pulled off um and then it was replicated in other stadiums throughout the course of the season but not like the first time right and where right. the pitcher can't hear the the telecom what a uh what a great idea and um just again that's just another example that of this great community that we have of ace fans just pulling together and coming up with some great ideas that that was that was awesome. The um, you mentioned Raiders tailgates. There was there's obviously a lot of crossover, and I felt like that too. I I, I thought there was a lot like a, a Raiders uh, tailgate or a lot of a Raiders pregame or maybe a um, you know Bay Bridge rivalry game where yep. there was just a lot of people partying and having fun. I was not able to go over to the 68s tailgate. I had my own um, tailgate going on the other side. Yeah. And uh, it was off the chain at our place, too. We just we didn't have, you know, feces colored beanbags getting thrown in, uh, <laughs> in the Dave Cavill's mouth. But uh, that's the only thing we stopped short on. We, we definitely had a great time. Um, it just a lot of fun. It was, it was just a fun day. It's too bad that it takes, you know, the owner trying to, to take the team away from us to, to make that happen. It could be like that all the time. And I, I want to stop you right there because I agree with you about that. And I think what we need to get into now is, okay, well, we did that. What's next, considering everything that's transpired since that night. But first, I do want to let you know, Stu, because I know you're a football fan. You love your Falcons, right? Here's the thing. Are you, have you, you've heard of FanDuel, right? Sure. Who has it? Well, FanDuel's given a, a great deal right now where if you put a $5 money line bet down, Stu, you get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. So you have to be a new customer. You have to do a, just a straight-up bet. There's no point spread. It's who wins, who loses, period. And then 
you get those bonus bets. Then you can start having crazy fun player props. Of course, those are goofy, but a lot of fun. They engage you, keep you into the game. And it's really at the end of the day, that's all this is, is a chance for you to have something to kind of cheer for. Fantasy's taken us so far, not very far, but so far. And now we've got a chance to, you know, even taste a little bit more. Have some fun, uh, win yourself some money. That's always a good thing. If you want to do the point spreads, you can do that. Of course, the overs, the unders, it's all waiting there for you. And all you got to do is go to fanduel.com slash locked on. And then when you get there, take advantage of that awesome deal for you from FanDuel, official sponsor of the National Football League. So here we were, Stu, walking out of that stadium thinking, well, we showed them, and you watch. This is going to turn the tide. And that isn't exactly what happened. In a way, well, it did. Because I, I was getting, and maybe, maybe you can speak to this. I was getting calls from people who never saw uh, the A's fans ever, except maybe in like a playoff game. They never saw them come together. So because it got so much play around the country, I was getting calls from people going, man, you guys are getting hosed. I can't believe that owner. He's a real, they would have never even dialed into it had it not been for the reverse boycott. So I, I, I will say it certainly got people's attention, but then in terms of how does it affect what comes after that? What do you say about that? Well, I, I going in, um, I don't think anyone that helped organize thought were, it was under any uh, delusions that John Fisher would slap himself in the head and say, what was I thinking? You know, um, I think what we set out to do was a have fun and go to a baseball game. Cause we all love doing that, but B let the media, national media, local media know that it's not us, it's him. And we definitely succeeded in that. I mean, it was very, oh, yeah obvious that there's a you know a large passionate fan base there that's just waiting to support a a worthwhile team and um it's just ridiculous i saw a thing today from um you know maybe a colleague of yours for rick tittle posted um if otani's with his new contract they signed with the dodgers if his agent gets 10 percent he makes more than the entire a's roster yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the agent gets 5%, but still it's crazy. And I did some math of my own and I figured this out that on a daily basis, the Oakland A's are spending based on their, their predicted uh, total payroll for this next season. They're spending $402,000 per game. Okay. Shohei is making 435,000. How much are they making per game? Four, no, per the A's are spending 402 per game. And that'll get you to about 65 million at the so end of the year. Just doing some back of a napkin in my head, they're easily making that every game. Yeah. Oh, of course. Especially if you're there having hot dogs. <laughs> well, I have not bought a hot dog at the Coliseum since uh how the hot dog guy uh left. So we'll just right. Yeah, well, you you remember when the colossal dogs were were the bomb, right? I mean, they were and, and the hot. I mean, and the hot legs were good. The I remember the uh, fish sandwich that the uh, black muslin bakery had behind home yeah. plate. Um, yeah. When my kids were little, if the A's needed a run, a couple runs, we needed we would get malts, and those were known as rally malts, and it worked every time. Um, yeah, we had so many good times at the Coliseum. It's yeah. just. And, you know, unlike most everybody else, I think that there's good times on the horizon. I I still cannot believe that they're going to be moving. Um, I'm waiting for those stadium renderings that were supposed to come out a couple of weeks ago or last week or whenever. Yeah. Um, I've seen stadium renderings from this ownership group for multiple places in Oakland, for Fremont, for Cisco Field in San Jose. Right. Uh, Howard Terminal. Um, Laney College. I mean, multiple spots in in Oakland for sure. Yeah, I remember seeing one for Sacramento years ago. You know, um, when this ownership group puts a shovel in the ground, will be the first time they've ever done anything successfully. I don't know that they have the wherewithal to do so. I still firmly believe 
they're going to be the Oakland Athletics for a long time. I Wow. That's a scoop right there. Did you hear that? Stu says they're going no place. But obviously that would mean a change in ownership, right? <laughs> There's no other way. Yeah. But, it, it, but if you think about it, Wayne, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you lose something or nearly lose something, you get it back, you kind of appreciate it more. Sure. If so, Are you applying sells, that to John Fisher or to the fans? Well, I'm saying if, if Fisher sells – and the ownership group, you know, everyone thinks the Warriors owner, but whoever it is commits to Oakland, it'll be off the chain. There will be, we'll be out drawing the Giants. There's right. no doubt in the mind. And I don't recall if I asked you this before, so excuse me if I have, I'm going to just ask you again. Do you have a choice between Howard Terminal and the Coliseum site? Do you have a preference? No. I mean, it would be really cool to have a state-of-the-art ballpark there at the Howard terminal. It's a little bit closer to me when I drive to the game. Not, not a lot. Um, it would be super cool to be able to go to house home of chicken and waffles there um, after a game or, or all the different great places at, at in Jack Linden square after a game. Um, I would be able to take a, the train from Vacaville to, to the game. If I chose right. to all that, I could still do that at the Coliseum too, though. Um, I don't have a preference. My preference is that they stay in Oakland. My second preference would be that they stay in Northern California. Okay. I, I, we'll, let's just see how it pans out. So what do you say to the naysayers? Because I know you've got to hear from them. I certainly do. Who say, hey, you know, if you just supported this team all along, this wouldn't have happened to you. The, I mean, the, I, know, I know what I say, but what do you say? The people that say that are just ignorant of the whole, and I don't mean when I say ignorant, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. I don't mean they're stupid, not at all. They're ignorant to the, what has ha transpired over the past 20 years with A's ownership and the, the slow slog that they've taken to get to where they're at. Um, it's easy if you're not, Again, if you're ignorant to what has transpired, it's easy to say something like that. But I, I, I don't really um, try not to get into too many arguments about things like that with people who don't know. Sure. What so you just you just chalk it up to, to hey, you're not educated as to what's really going on, and so you don't know. And just try, and you know, some people are just gonna laugh and hate, and okay. Sure. If that's what makes yeah. you happy, great. Um, they make themselves look dumb, not me. So here we go with the at least 2024. We know that's going to happen. 25, 6, 7, maybe 8. We don't know at all yet. You say you feel. By the way, you're not alone. Vital Vegas, which is very, very well followed here in town, uh, where I live in Las Vegas now. They are uh, somebody you can usually count on. If they say something, there's definitely some truth in there in somewhere the it's not you know it's not always but they say uh they broke it down they said look w we say the odds are that the number one uh destination for the athletics beyond 2024 is oakland california i i, I saw that and because i i think maybe they have some insight that i don't have i keep hearing things and being that you're a Vegas local now, you probably hear this too, that I don't know how well thought of the Fisher ownership group is down there. I mean, it's not like it's something to be excited about. All right, this guy gets to come to town. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, I, again, I just am wondering why does anyone think he doesn't have a track record of success? He has a track record of the opposite of success. So yeah. um, a lot of red flags come with this guy, Las Vegas. So you're, you're, you're saying you're colored. Uh, I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. That's basically your bottom. When shovels hit the ground, that's when I will say, okay, I was wrong. Somebody the other day was, he's a Cleveland Indians fan. And I said, when shovels Guardians, hit the ground. Guardians. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Guardians. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Stephen Vogt. Uh, so I said, I said the same thing. I go, I'll believe it when the shovels hit the dirt. He goes, well, knowing your ownership, he goes, the shovel will break as soon as it hits the dirt. 
or so he'll go. or what he'll he'll find a shovel and shell it or trade it for a shovel with a hole in it or something i mean sure i don't know the great analogy i don't know if that was a great analogy but yeah i trade this sh- shovel out for a rake and wonder why it doesn't hold dirt Uh, yeah how come the dirt keeps going through all right so let's talk about 2024 uh that's where i was headed with this and so uh i hear that uh opening day might be kind of interesting you want to tell me more about that again that's another hal gordon idea from the way i understand it although i'm sure the 68s and the and the dive bar guys uh, you know are are also uh working on this and the plan is to tailgate and not go in the stadium boycott <laughs> opening day which because we're not going to have a reverse boycott it'll be the most likely highest attended game of the year um last year you're welcome john fisher etc for you know getting people to go to one game that's not going to happen this year. And so opening day is traditionally, you know, one of the higher attended games and sure. Um, it might not be this year. So, so if I have this, I don't, straight, think, anyone, still- I don't think anyone is going to be, you know, we're no one's going to be accosted for going in or vilified for going in. Cause again, we love baseball, but the general, um, the plan is let's tailgate yeah. and not win the game. And there's and nothing that, that they can do and, to make and, you and minimize the number of cars that are in the parking lot. Take part, walk into the, and go join somebody's tailgate. Yeah, I'm coming to yours. So somebody's going to pay for parking, and I guess the team will make some money there. But if they're not buying tickets to the game, there's nothing they can do. And no legal- concessions. I mean, right. So, but it's not like you're loitering. You've paid nope. to park, which means you get that spot. There's no rule that says you can't be in that spot or you can't. Make uh, some of your famous hot dogs. He'll he'll send some henchmen out there or something. Who knows? But anyway, as long as we're not going into the game, then it'll be just fine. Message delivered there. So I I just, in my mind, I'm trying to think it's opening day and the the bunting is out and, you know, all of that, all the hype that comes with it. Media is talking about baseball and the Giants and the A's. And then, (laughs) and here comes game one and there's, you know, crickets, nobody in there. I mean, it's crazy now obviously the a's uh found out about what you were doing last time and did what they could do to circumvent it to a degree they raised the ticket prices which was you know i still can't believe they did that but they did they made it a premium price game which i suppose they made a little bit more money off of it now what can they do to combat a situation where nobody goes into the ballpark what what can they do um sell the team to someone that gives a damn i love it okay uh well we can't wait obviously for that to happen (laughs) are you i asked this question um we did a a poll and we had really good response to the poll there were uh uh yeah over fifteen thousand views and uh just under a thousand votes question was after all you've endured Stu clary are you still an athletics fan it was multiple choice maybe uh yes i'm green and gold till i die or no they are dead to me where are you at in 2024 i will watch the games on tv i will listen to the games on the radio when i can't watch on tv um the day that um single game tickets go on sale i will buy four tickets to game 81 80 yeah 81 sure um and otherwise you know i i live in vacaville where in the summer sometimes we have two weeks of 105 degree temperatures if it's one of those things where it's just brutally hot here i might go to a game like a day game if i get free tickets i might go (laughs) Yeah, um, caveat. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I'll continue to watch on TV. I'll continue to root. I will go to the last game for sure. Otherwise, okay. um, I'll go watch them on the road. Uh, my wife and I, you know, we we have a son that lives in Texas, a couple hours from Houston. Maybe that, you know, maybe we go take a road trip somewhere. 
I'll go watch them on the road. I'm an, I'm an A's fan. You know, I'll watch them. I'm an Oakland A's fan. Right. So if they do become the Vagabond A's and then eventually the Las Vegas A's, can't believe I'm saying that. Are you out at that point? Are you going to hang in there? It's going to always be your favorite team no matter what. I, I don't know. You know, it's funny. I've been asked that several times. It's a great question. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm going to do what my heart tells me. Right. Um, it's to sit here in December and say, no, hell no, the hell with these guys. I'm not going to yeah. do it. And I lean that way for sure. But sure. I don't know. I, well, in I, our survey, 84% of the people were either forget about it, I'm done, or I'm going to wait and see. That was that was a huge percentage. If you combine the two, hardly anybody's like, yeah, I'm there. Sure. Move I, them to I, will anywhere. Say I, this, don't care. I will say this. Unless I have an invitation to come visit you and you're you know, going to take us to the finest steakhouse in Las Vegas, I'll yes, never go to Las Vegas again. If the A's move there. I don't care. I will never go to Las and, and that includes changing freaking planes. In fact, usually when we go visit our son that lives in Texas, we've oftentimes had to change planes in Las Vegas. I will pay extra to not change planes there. I swear to God, that's, that's wow. Awesome. Oh, I, I like that. I've at least got a shot to take you to the Golden Steer, though. So that's good. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, if you're saying, OK, come see me, we're going to go to the Golden Steer. OK, that's different. Yeah. But yeah, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, now, I want to see how smart you are here because we asked a trivia question uh, last episode. Let's see if you can get it right. 2000. Fan fan <laughs> no, that's not the answer. Okay. No, no, no. That's not. That was, that was earlier. 2004, Eric Chavez did something that no other A's player has done since. What did he do in 04, almost 20 years ago? Hit for the cycle. Okay. That's a good guess. I would. That, Yes, I mean, I could see that even happening. So not that? So it's not, not that, that, though. No? Um, wow, I was really confident. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. He got a multi-year deal worth over $50 million. <laughs> it should have been Tahada, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Or, Actually, say, you know or, what it should have been, Wayne? Who do you think? It should have been Simeon. Yeah, you're right. Homegrown, uh, Bay Area native, would have taken a discount to stay. Great in the community, yep. local guy. Yeah, very sad. Hey, don't don't bum us out. But you, you, you understand the irony of that answer to that question, right? It's just, are you kidding? Uh, yeah. I, I, heard, I heard Brody say the other day, and he's right. You know, we've never had, we're the only team in baseball that's never had a $100 million contract, period. It's it's just mind boggling. And yet, you know, Bud C League, Manfred, yeah. like, you know, oh, Oakland doesn't deserve a team. It was a mistake to move the, come on. Right. Come on. I'm working on my Manfred impression, by the way. There is no Oakland deal, okay? <laughs> All right, we got to go. But this is a guy I, I just love having on. And Stu, will you come back and visit us again, please? I, I will here, but you know, again, we have the we have an understanding about me and uh, totally and understood. Cool. We got that. <laughs> now, we got anytime, that. Wayne, it's always my pleasure to come and see you, man, and to chat with. You. It's always a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me on. Well, we appreciate you being here. That's an A's fan for sure, Stu Clary, the guy behind the whole reverse boycott, and you'll see him throughout the year, of course, and right here on Locked on A's. Appreciate you spending time with us every day. If you're an everydayer, thank you. If you got comments, leave them in this section down below on YouTube. If you're just doing this old school, you're listening to a podcast with your ears, not your eyes. Well, we appreciate that too. Don't forget, you can get us on X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it today, at Locked on A's. It's that simple. My name's Wayne Coy. Thank you for being here. And until next time, you keep on swinging.